Hi, I'm Aditi Zacharias. I run the Kerala Museum in Edupalli. Uh, my background is a master's in fine art and a degree in economics before that. I have exhibited my work um, all over India. Uh, currently, as the director of the Kerala Museum, my role here includes everything from publicity to fundraising to designing the programs to uh, cleaning up and anything else that is really needed to keep this place going. Knowledge of the arts makes better citizens. This is something that um, our Madhavan Naya, who set up the Kerala Museum, the Madhavan Naya Foundation, um, truly believed in. His idea was that if we equip a man with knowledge of the arts, he will also become a better citizen. He will have the awareness to see the world around him, represent the world around him and start telling his own story through the uh, language that he develops of the world around him. Um, when Madhavan Naya first set up this museum, he actually was unique in the fact that it was a private museum set up by a man who had a vision just to explain to the public what Kerala's history is about and what the art gallery uh, uh, presents is 100 years of Indian art. So public could walk in and learn about Kerala's history, public could walk in and learn about 100 years of India's art movements. We started the company school of painting and the collection goes on to the modern age all of which was collected with the idea that people can get a panoramic view of what India's art movements are about. Where did India's artists begin and where have they reached today? Um, what were the key points in Kerala's history? And what were those turning points? Who were the key protagonists in Kerala's history? And this is something, a topic which is not included in our CBSE, state or uh, any syllabus really in schools. So he felt it was something very important to tell the story of Kerala's history. Um, in the 1980s, when he first developed the idea of the museum and set up the museum uh, and the art gallery, he actually uh, from his point of view, from his travels, from the museums he had seen, he came up with a vision for how this museum should be. Uh, today, when we look back at that vision and when we look at what was made out of his ideas then, it is still very radical, it's still very new, it's quite contemporary. But we are looking at a time and an age when people have so much information at their fingertips that often when they come into the museum, they're looking for the same kind of interactive um, information at your fingertips experience. So today, as we look at this museum, we try to revision how this museum will work for public and for people who are walking in on a daily basis, children who come here. Um, and as we think of that, we know that there are uh, experiential uh, learning uh, things that can be added to the uh, setup. There are, uh, you know, even device and uh, AV related modules that can be introduced. Many interesting uh, and new age things can be introduced to the museum um, and the art gallery. But keeping it really simple, over the last one year, we've started off with just introducing worksheets and art walks. Um, the worksheets in the History Museum are taking off on specific exhibits in the museum. What they do is they 
via the medium of art, they explore the concept that the specific topic is relating to. So, for instance, when you look at Kathakali, there is the notion of a mask, the notion of good versus evil, there's the notion of a superhero character and the trials and tribulations that he goes through in the story. There's the notion of mind, there's drama, there's storytelling. All of this we look at through the worksheet and through a creation of the Kathakali mask. While the children are working on the Kathakali mask, they are able to come to terms with these colors that signify something. The um, idea of different, you know, uh, lines that signify something, different parts of the hand and the eye that move. They're looking through their worksheet while they make the mask and each child's mask is a expression of their own, their own creativity. So this is something that they uh, would ordinarily define as just a Kerala traditional art form which slowly they have taken via the worksheet and given a new interpretation to to help them to understand that this is something that is a old form of storytelling an ancient form of storytelling that uses uh, gestures and no um, words by the actors to help them understand all of this redefining this common definition of Kathakali for them. The artwork on the other hand is something that draws people in to a space that would ordinarily be quite inhibiting for most people. Entering an art gallery is something that is, you, you do it if you really, really, really love art but and if you understand it. So when we say enter the art gallery for an artwork, we are helping people to come in and giving them a few tools to start understanding what they're seeing there. Um, through the very first uh, introductory discussions itself, you'll see a person relaxing and starting to feel that yes, they can approach a painting, they can look at it, they can, at the end of the artwork, they do arrive at a sense of, I can decide whether this painting appeals to me, to my aesthetics or not. So with the artwork, when we take people through a historical timeline of uh, India's art movements, they slowly begin to understand uh, why an artist did what he did at that time. Uh, they slowly begin to understand uh, what what is driving uh, those artists in a group to work together? Um, what made them rise to fame? What made them rise to fame after their deaths? Um, what were the political stories being told by artists through their art? And this is what is really significant because when we see the work of the past 100 years of Indian art, we see India's political story unfolding before our eyes. When we see Raja Ravi Varma's paintings, when we see the company school of art, when we move over to the progressive artists who were defying the Bengal school's traditional views, uh, uh, looking at traditional Indian art for um, uh, inspiration. And these progressive artists were looking towards Europe for inspiration right in the year when India gained independence. This contradict was happening and you know this tells us a completely different story it adds to our understanding of how India's history uh, unfolded when you look at the Bengal famine artist painting during that time uh, all of it tells us where we are as a country as a nation as an identity when we look at Bhupin Kakar's work uh, as a gay man when we're looking at Rekha Rodhitya's work as a a woman drawing nude women, uh, all of this tells us so much about India, about people in our country, about how people are thinking or making images of their existence. And this is where we talk about, we actually feel 
very strongly we believe that a child and a person begins to draw and starts making these marks of the world around them the the first instinct to draw is to make a mark to show to say i'm here i've made this mark the the next instinct is to say i'm telling the story i have got i have seen today this and i would like to tell the story and this is why we draw this is why we create those are the basic reasons to communicate with others that we use drawing for drawing as a tool for learning creativity as a tool for learning is something that we explore through the other workshops and um, art sessions that we hold for kids the idea is to provide an immersive experience where children adults all of them are able to just simply relax um, workshop materials are provided basic techniques are explained and facilitators guide you through the workshop but don't actually hold your hand in this process of creativity when we when what we've seen from for instance the wash workshop that we held um we are finding people of all different ages come in and sit down and pick up those tools which are provided to them very few um keeping it really simple just a brush and paper and a simple technique that's demonstrated uh without you know having too many steps involved keeping the steps really simple um and allowing them to simply let go uh adults and children have found it difficult to unlearn their existing uh, training which is to come and check with the teacher and say am i doing okay have i done this all right uh, am i doing this correctly you know uh, this is something very important and when we say no uh, we are not going to get involved in whether you're doing it correctly are you have you adapted the process correctly are you using the technique correctly none of this is important you've seen a demonstration of how it works and now it's up to you it's your individual style it's your free expression this is something that facilitates creativity and learning and what we've found is that even um history through the kathakali worksheet uh for instance is being learned about the topics are being picked up through this free expression process that is happening when we look at uh, history by itself and if we are not able to uh, construct a story that helps us understand i'm not talking about learning or learning by rote because we don't want to address learning by rote at all but um, uh, when we want to understand what a significant event in history for instance what happened uh, during a significant event in history um often uh, a visual of how and what took place or an image that uh, is connected to one of the dates or to the place where it happened or a person who was important during that time uh, once you have that image you're able to link up and uh, do the necessary uh, drawing of lines to connect up and make a picture uh why is art important in this learning of history i mean uh, it can be art uh, as in storytelling art it can be uh, the visual arts it can be any of these things that allow you to uh create that impression of the world around you the idea of providing art as a tool for learning history is to provide that medium to express the story a sort of uh, art education that does not go into technique too much does not go into concept too much uh we're looking still at this 
maximum at the point where a teacher sets up a still life sketch for the students to draw and uh, there's hardly any actual actual rigor in the process of making art in schools uh, it's not a subject that actually appears even in the final board exams uh, of most syllabi uh, though the icsc isc syllabus has the uh, art as a topic uh, the other syllabi none of them actually have art as a topic in the final board exams why is that this is something uh, that really needs to be addressed because uh, in fact by the 9th standard and 10th standard and 11th standard and 12th standard last four years of a child's uh, schooling uh, art is not given any relevance at all uh, although i wouldn't use it to uh, judge or uh, you know uh, sort of mark a milestone in a child's development or in uh, have it way in his uh, exam marks or in his you know future studies entrance to his future uh, college exams or whatever it is uh, i would still say that uh, this is something education and art is something that would give a child the skills to understand the world around him this is one of the main uh, if you were Uh, ideating in any way, and if you had basic uh, skills of creativity where you let go and you just express your ideas, um, you will be able to express your idea far more clearly, and uh, you know, uh, be able to show it to communicate it to others far more clearly than if you didn't have those art skills. So this is something really that would assist children. and adults greatly if they were to have free expression sessions where you just sit and draw and paint and make something it can be making out of nothing it can be making out of anything around you museums uh, provide a space where uh some part of history has been preserved this is a definition that a lot of the children who come here also give me uh we would like actually to look at that definition again and again and understand what it is exactly that we're trying to preserve as a museum today when we try and rethink what we uh mean to public uh what we mean for people for visitors who come and spend their valuable time here uh we are thinking that our museum should not only interpret the past or provide uh, alternative interpretations of various events that happened in the past but we must also have uh, current uh, interpretations of what's happening around us because this forms a vital part of making of history as well so uh, museums all together if you're looking at it in the indian context you have um, visitors visiting museums as part of uh, home uh, family expeditions school trips uh, you know all of which i would say is great because every time a child steps out of their classroom uh, the child is gaining uh, huge leaps and bounds in experience that the child would not gain sitting in the classroom uh, any outbound trip to any place is fantastic the more so with museums because uh, an art space actually gives you an idea of what happened in your own past any art space like the uh, art gallery the biennale the um, whether it's the folklore museum whether it's the darbar hall whether it's this uh, museum whether it's a fort that you go visit whether it's ajanta elora any of these places will give you an idea of what happened in your past and why you are here today this is really important for any person to know so i see museums becoming a, a sort of hub for uh, experiential learning not so much for actual access to information 
we can provide that access for in information in a curated way at the museum so when a person comes in for instance to see the vasco da gama exhibit he knows at that exhibit he is given cues to go find out more things about vasco da gama more things about the portuguese coming to india um but other than that uh, information is actually available at everyone's fingertips on their smartphones on their computers on google or wherever else it is that they are searching um if they really wanted to find out all this information they would be able to find that out on their own uh, we provide we would provide as a museum we would provide these different cues different starting points and reference points for you to go find out more about each topic uh, so i would not look at uh, the information side of it so much as the experience itself of being in a museum learning in a museum um jointly learning in a group you know when people come in together and do things uh, collaboratively it's very different from when they do things individually or search for information all by themselves on their phone it's uh, there's a lot of give and take in an art walk for instance when we uh, do the art walk together and the 25 participants each participant has a different question a different perspective um often somebody puts in words what many other people are thinking and uh, the others are uh, too shy to ask the question and one person is able to actually ask that question and put it in words and find the answer for everyone else so a lot of the energy of these learning experiences comes from being in that group environment comes from being in a group of strangers sometimes comes from being in a group of where, like uh, i was uh, giving this example one day where we had a student in the kathakali worksheet session who was telling the stories of the kathakali shows that he had been to already with his grandparents and his parents so he knew already the plot lines of many of the stories so he was able to tell and explain to his classmates with a lot of passion uh, you know what story lines he's already witnessed and he's seen in kathakali plays so uh, this was something that actually showed us that you know uh, in, uh, from the workshop participants themselves there's a lot of input and this helps the whole group you know that energy is very important so uh, we do look at as a museum and i've seen um, other museums in india who are bringing themselves up to the modern age now um, we do see a lot of introduction of uh, digital technology Uh, there are audio tours that you can listen to location based there are um, lots of screens and uh, touch screen type of uh, interactive devices that you can uh, use to explore information in a museum uh, but apart from all of these uh, finally it is the users uh, you know experience as soon as they come in to the museum um, to provide a space where you can spend the whole day learning dipping in dipping out in a sort of free flow way uh this is something that we are working towards for us as a museum we are trying to work towards that but there are many other museums in india that actually already do offer this uh they offer all of these other experiences also there's programming across the concepts and the ideas of the museum's collection or of you know uh, the city that the museum is based in for instance in bombay you will have museums in bombay looking at bombay's history and having uh, like dialogues on its uh, past on its future on its you know interpretations of the city itself that uh, happen so uh, a museum would offer a person all of those different uh, experiences from doing a guided tour to self uh, uh, exploration of the museum to providing experiences where the person can learn at a workshop or a lecture demonstration or meet an academic who's uh, you know um, uh, in the field who's talking about history and the arts um, all of these affiliated organizations also start coming into the museum so it becomes a much more vibrant much more active much more uh, uh, present day a uh, space rather than being only about the past
as an artist today i would say um i am largely self taught i did a ba in economics and then much later did a masters in fine art uh the reason i did a ba in economics is because no one really believed at that stage at that point of time even even in spite of my uh background at the museum uh no one really believed that uh art would work as a profession uh this was at the time when mba was like you know the most important thing for every child it was like a new uh, course that had appeared on the scene uh, it had reached the peak of its uh, existence in india you know the mba course and uh, everyone wanted that okay get an mba then you can decide what you want to do with your life later you know but uh, the time is now and if you have uh, this urge to express yourself in terms of uh, image words um, today i mean the sky is the limit you can express yourself in any uh, you can use air if you want to uh, and uh, i think that as an artist the richness of experience and the richness of life is uh, something that is you know uh, there's no limit to that if you see any artist today who's a successful artist they're crossing the boundaries of uh, business the business world they're crossing the boundaries of uh, pedagogy they're crossing the boundaries of creativity with their own art they're using materials of all kinds they're using technology of all kinds it's all cutting edge across all of these fields they're working with the latest and the newest of concepts most artists would cross all of these different the spectrum would be you know really wide uh, this is something that is a feature of even if you look at uh, rabindranath tagore if you look at uh, whether you look at hussein whether you look at any of these big artists and even the artists of today the really really well known artists who stuck to their dream and really followed through with their vision they are actually living these lives where they have you know a part of them is being employed in so much creativity in all these different fields uh that is something which only really art can give you and if you're a person like that who wants to do 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 in so many different ways then art is the place to be